<laughs> hey everyone, this is Dan, and I'm about to give you a basic tutorial on how to make sprites. First, to actually make a sprite, you have to click this Make Sprite tab, which is basically a red Pac-Man on the top of the screen. Once you've created a sprite, I'm just going to call this sprite, Sprite 1. When you make a sprite, to actually edit it, you have to click Edit Sprite. Then, you click Create New Sprite tab, which creates a new, a new sprite. Once you have a new sprite, set the dimensions. Just to make this simple, I'm going to make it 16 by 16, but the default re resolution is 32 by 32. Usually, to make games a clear grid design, it's best to have them as a multiple of two. I'm about to go over all the basic drawing tools. The most basic drawing tool is the pencil tool. The pencil tool is a free draw tool that lets you draw basic shapes. It can let you draw anything you want in a free form style. Next is this is the brush tool. This tool is more like actually a spray paint tool. It brings down the color you want and sets it in lower opacity around the edges. The erase tool, for example, if you do a line with the line tool, this simply allows you to erase all that you've done. Say you have a color. I'm going to make a red square right here. If you wanted to use that color again, but you had, say, a different color, you could just use the fill tool and select the color. Once you do that, you can use the fill tool example to fill in any color you want. Another important tool you need to understand is the free freeform polygon tool. This lets you click at different points to make a freeform polygon of any shape and any amount of size. There are three basic shape drawing tools. There's the square, square tool, the circle tool, and this tool. I can't exactly describe it, but once you bring it above a certain resolution, it will look like a rectangular square with rounded edges. To make any of these three tools per perfect, like say a perfect circle or a perfect rectangle, all you have to do is hold shift while you're drawing the shape. For example, perfect circle or perfect square. It makes all the sides or lengths equal. There are also three kinds of selection tools. The first selection tool is a basic square selection. Say I have this line, but I only want to select half of it and move it. I can select half of it and move it to any position I want and then hold it there. Once you let go, it's still selected. To deselect, you either have to select another part of the screen or change to a non-selection tool. Another kind of selection tool is the magic wand tool. The magic wand lets you select all the items of the same color that are touching each other. So, for example, if I want to get rid of all the red on the screen, I magic wand the red and then click delete. You can also magic wand things and use them as well. Finally, there's the freeform circle selection tool. This tool lets you use circles to select any shape you want. It's kind of like the freeform polygon tool, except you're selecting. Once you've selected something, you have to you can move it around, delete it, change it, copy it, or do anything you want with it. To, to change the size of any of these tools, you can click the different side uh, size icons. There are six size icons, and range from small to extremely large. In 16 by 16, small is just one pixel. In large, it would cover up the, almost the entire screen. When you're using the pencil tool, the, sh the shapes are bigger than when you're using the line tool. For example, small is the same, but if you go up to pencil on second level, it's extremely large, but on line, it's smaller. Now that you, you now that I've gone over all the basic drawing tools, oh whoops, I have two three more. Another important thing is the text tool. The text tool, instead of drawing every single letter by hand, allows you to import text into your, your sprite. I'm just gonna say text. 
As you can see, this is way too large. And that's because I had it on the second level. If you change it down to the first level and retype the text, then it's the good size. This is still too large. That's, this is only because I'm using a 16 by 16 resolution. If I were to say create a new image, 32 by 32, the default, type in the text again, then it would be the right size. Finally, you, finally is the fill tool and the change all images of the color tool. The fill tool is basic. It's in its, used in lots of other drawing programs. It lets you fill in all the er the entire area of a color or blank opacity. Another important th thing to understand is change all pixels in the image of one color. For example, say I have red inside, but I also have red outside. This tool allows you to change all the colors from one in the entire image from one color to the other. For example, if I wanted to change this image to blue, I could click on the red and change it, all of them to blue. And say I wanted to change the outer border to dark blue, I could also do that. You also have to understand the different color selection tools. The, over on this side, the right side, there is an array of different colors. You can pick from just pre-selected colors for right and left, which are whatever mouse you use. Mouse button. For example, say I have red on the left and yellow on the right. I can immediately use either of these colors by selecting right or left button on the mouse. There are also a different range of there's also a range of grays in this certain icon. There's also a range from white to black that lets you select any color in between. There is also a large gradient that goes from red through the entire rainbow into red, with then light to dark on the x-axis. This allows you to freely select any any color that can be possibly selected using the Game Maker software. For example, say I wanted to use an orange, which is between red and yellow. All I have to do is click in between here, get an orange, then darken it or lighten it. For example, now I have a good orange. Now I can draw an orange, an orange figure, or just fill in the screen. Another important thing to understand with images is opacity. Say, for example, you wanted to make a ghost, but you can't make it, but you can't make it slightly invisible. Say I wanted to make it partially invisible. I could set the opacity which ranges from 0 to 255 to 120, and then draw, draw a ghost shape. As you can see, you can see the grid, the pre-built-in grid through the lines. This is because it's not, it's partially showing through. Now you have a ghost figure. I'm just going to add red eyes real quick. As you can see, if you integrated this into the game, since you can see the background through it, you could also see any other objects through it. This would make it partially invisible. Finally, you also need to understand the uh, integration of the line tool. When you have a line tool, you can there's a pre-built-in arrow function that lets you draw different arrows using this. If I set the size to one and they'll pass you back to 255. If I draw a regular line, there's no arrow. But say I click the right arrow button. This draws an arrow from the fr that is on the point that I end the line, and the color is the right color. The, border, the regular border color is the left color, and the color inside the arrow is the right color. For example, if I drew it this way, the inside is yellow and the outside is black, but it's reversed. In this case, the arrow points to the point where you started the line. And finally, you can also draw it so there's arrows pointing both directions. This is fairly easy.
Now that I've shown you all the basic drawing functions, I'm going to draw a basic sprite and then integrate it into the, into a game mode. I'm just going to draw a simple red path in, just like the regular sprite image for the game. First, I need to set the circle tool to, bl to blank left color. This means that there won't be anything filling it in. Now that I've drawn a red perfect circle with the shift tool, I'm going to fill in a slightly lighter red circle inside. So to make it things easier, you can turn on a grid. This grid allows you to see every single pixel. But once you but once you zoom out enough, you won't be able to see the grid because the lines will be too small and close together. I'm just going to draw this two pixels in and then hold shift to change it. Now I have a slightly lighter red outline. I'm just going to fill in the outer border really quick. As you can see, sometimes when you use sometimes when you hold control Z, it automatically changes the it automatically changes the tool to the select color tool. And then sometimes when you select nothing, it changes the opacity to zero because there's nothing there. All you have to do is change it back to 255. Now that I have an outer circle selected, I'm going to use a barely lighter color to color in the inside. Now that I have different shades of red, I'm going to have to use the line tool to make a mouth. I'm going to select the darkest color and then draw two lines from each side moving into the center. Now that I have a mouth, I'll have to use the wand tool to get rid of everything inside. And then use the square selection tool to get rid of the outer edges. Now that I have this done, I'm going to use the slightly darker red to draw an outer border for it. Well, an inner border. Then use the fill tool to fill that in. Finally, I'm going to have to use the circle tool again to draw an eyeball. If you select, if you use if you click the gray square at the bottom of the circle tool, it lets you draw a completely filled in shape. Now that I've drawn an eye, I'm going to fill in the pupil and the iris with the line tool. Usually when free-forming shapes, it's best to use the line tool because with the regular tool, pencil tool, it's easier to mess up. Now I have my basic sprite. Just to make just as a really quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to integrate the sprite into a game. If you want to see how to design complex objects, which is what I'm about to integrate the sprite into, see Matt's tutorial. Now that I have my completed sprite, I'm going to create an object and call it Object One. When you have when you want to integrate a sprite into an object, all you have to go do is go to Sprite and then select the sprite. Now that I have this sprite, I'm going to create a basic room with the Create Room tab, and then place the sprite inside it. Now I have four objects, objects one, inside this room. Now that I have one room, I can run the game, and the sprite will automatically be placed inside. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you understand all the you've understood all the proper drawing tools and how they work. Please subscribe and watch our future videos on how to create more complex imagery and programming.